Hello, my name is Tom Stiles and this is Tom's Ready Room Show. Today I want to discuss something that I've mentioned several times in regards to adding an external antenna to your shortwave radio. And one of the methods, which is the simplest method, is to add what's called a random wire. So it's just a, a length of wire that you uh, put out in your backyard or whatever and uh, bring in to your house and hook up to your shortwave radio. Well, the one thing to keep in mind when you do that is you just don't want to take the wire and bring it into your house. You want to have coax cable that is, goes from your radio in your house or your room or your workshop outside and away from the RF noise environment that is created in your house and then connect that to your random wire. And to better explain what I meant, I found a YouTube video from a fellow YouTuber and he's done a pretty good job of explaining what I'm trying to say in a graphical format. So his name is Greg and I'm going to show you his video now. So here we go. Okay, so here I have 15 meters. I don't have 20 meters. I don't want to split up that twin, twin lead power cord, but I did have brand new. It was rolled up in a roll. This is actually another roll of of cable that I got uh, on the closeout sale. This was 15 meters of really quite thick. Uh, I guess it's uh, maybe if it's DC rated, it would have to be 10 amps or more. It's quite a thick, quite a thick cable. Um, Multi-core, very typical of what someone would get at a hardware store. Uh, this cable is probably. One of the cheaper sorts of cables you can get. Sometimes it's cheaper to get a bigger cable than a thinner cable. So this would be very, very common, commonly used. And 15 meters. So this is double the size of my vertical antenna. Surely, if anything's going to suck in signals, it's going to be this. So I'll just set this up. It's uh, it's five o'clock outside. It's completely dark because I'm in winter time. Uh, the sun's been down for uh, a couple of, well, about an hour and a half. So I'll just throw this up. Again, um, it's going to go from uh, the back of my radio, out the door, under the door, uh, across the little balcony, and up into trees outside uh, my thing. I, I doubt that I'll be able to get any footage of it outside because this cable's black. And the sky is black, and the ground is black, and everything's black. So uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get some footage, but uh, I doubt that you'll see it. So I'll throw this up outside now, and uh, we'll compare this against the vertical. It's, it's minus three, and I'm outside playing antennas. Okay. As you can see, it's pretty dark outside. And what I might do is I might just throw this into a tree. Alright. Let's see if I can get it up. One of these big trees here. <laughs> Well, that, that wasn't that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Right. Okay. You're not gonna be able to see it, but uh, I got it up in the tree there. I had to tie a rock to it. So, 
majority of the cable is outside horizontal and crap that's freezing out there okay so whew, still a bit cool okay 13710 I don't know who it is it's a Arabic station we're on the outside uh, vertical now and we'll just uh, change over I got my pen ready for my switch here on the back change over from the vertical now vertical now over to the random wire antenna wow Back to the vertical. Oh. There he is. Now, I don't know, but I think there's a bit of a difference. Vertical. 15 meter random wire. Seven meter vertical. 15 meter random wire. Welcome back inside to a bit warmer my ham shack. First off you'll have to trust me that the external wire that I threw up is is up in a tree. It's about four meters above the ground and extends away from the house. The majority of the wire is outside. Okay so another question is why is performance worse now compared to the 10 meter indoor antenna that I showed before? The new one is now 50% longer, it's 15 meters long rather than 10. It's now for the most part outdoors, where the other one was all indoors. And uh, it's mostly straight, where the other one was bent around corners and so forth. What I have now really does approximate what many shortwave listeners at one time or another try and use. But the signals from this one are worse than ever. How can a bigger outdoor antenna work worse than a smaller bent around, just roughly thrown up indoor antenna? The reason is this, signal to noise ratio. Write this phrase into the vacant memory allocation spots inside your head, signal to noise. Now I will explain why we have seen this odd outcome. This is my house. It's a nice little house. I have a window, a door, and a tree. But just like you at your house, I have an invisible zone of noise. Normally, AC power house wiring, if everything is perfect, shouldn't make any noise at all. However, in reality, wiring is rarely textbook perfect. Because of this, usually all AC systems do make some noise. But... Most often, it's the appliances connected to it that makes the noise. Radio frequency, or also known as RF noise. Anyway, noise can be radiated from the devices themselves and or conducted back into the AC supply line. You may have a combination of both these types of noise sources. Noise that is conducted back into the AC line will radiate from the AC line as if it was an antenna. In an ideal situation, these radiated fields are very weak, so the signal strength from this radiation dies out quite quickly as we move away from the AC wiring system. At a rough guess, within 15 to 25 metres away from the house, the noise levels have dropped considerably. It's ironic that the noise that is most often complained about, we ourselves have generated. Inside my house I have my radio. It's a good radio, but every radio needs an antenna. So I string up an indoor wire antenna, similar to what was shown in my previous video. It's not elegant by any means, but it is sensitive to RF type of energy. The problem is that my antenna is inside the zone of noise. Regarding noise, the radio is an idiot. 
the radio can't tell the difference between RF noise or RF signals. To it, they are just the same, and they are all processed out towards the speaker just the same. Okay, so an inside antenna didn't work out that good. Let's open the window and string it up to the eaves outside. This may improve signal levels a little, but we will still be plagued with high noise levels. That is because our antenna is still in the noise zone. Now let's stretch it out to the tree then. This is a similar situation to what was shown earlier in this video. The problem is, is that still the majority of our antenna remains in the noise zone. Our increase in wire length did not do much more than just be more sensitive to even more noise. That is why our longer antenna did worse than our smaller one. Remember, it's the signal to noise ratio that we should be concerned with. Adding length to our antenna does nothing if it's still in the noise zone. Actually, I'm wrong. It makes things worse. We want to reduce noise and increase signal. In modern homes with all their noise, it's very nearly impossible to do this with a random wire antenna that is directly connected to the radio. By using an external antenna of good design and fed with a proper feed line, we can place distance between the receiving part of our antenna system and our noise. That then reduces the noise level that we're picking up. In turn, that then improves the signal to noise ratio. The result? nice strong signals of course, but as we have reduced our background noise levels, we are now able to hear the weaker stations that were previously buried in the noise. As a general rule, bigger antennas are more sensitive to RF energy than small antennas. So bigger is often better, but not when the bigger doesn't improve the signal to noise ratio. Again, signal to noise ratio, it's everything. While on some level everyone accepts such a saying as being logical, they do not always put it into practice. When a radio hobbyist grasps the importance of improving the signal to noise ratio, it's like an epiphany or a revelation. It's then that they'll know that in the most common situations, that direct connected random wire antennas rarely work as well as they had hoped for.